Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a Green-White Enchantress deck as voted on by my Patreon supporters featuring Sithis Harvest Sand, the 2-mana 1-2 legendary enchantment creature Nymph, saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell we gain one life and draw a card. So an awesome card draw engine in a deck that's all enchantments. And to combo with Sithis we also have Sanctum Weaver, the 2-mana 0-2 enchantment creature Dryad that can tap to add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of enchantments we control. So by itself Sanctum Weaver makes 1 mana, but will quickly get out of hand the more enchantments we deploy. And if we have Sanctum Weaver and Sithis both in play, of course the more enchantments we deploy the more cards we draw, the more mana we can generate with Sanctum Weaver making it easier to cast more and more enchantments, so the two play very well with each other. And then we've got an additional card draw engine in the form of Enchantress's Presence, 3 mana, saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. So even if the enchantment gets countered, we would still draw a card, that's also true for Sithis, so that's nice. And then we can eventually draw into our two copies of Sigil of the Empty Throne, a 5 mana enchantment, saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. So if we've got a Sanctum Weaver in play, we can easily make multiple angels in the same turn once we start drawing cards with all our card draw engines. And then we've got another two card combo to keep us alive in the meantime, which is the nine lives plus solemnity combo. Nine lives a three man enchantment with hexproof, saying if a source would deal damage to us, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. And then when there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, we have to exile it. And when it leaves the battlefield, we lose the game. So we can essentially soak up nine hits from different sources from the opponent. But if we also have Solemnity in play, players cannot get counters. And counters can be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments or lands. So with both in play, we can no longer put incarnation counters on nine lives. But we would still prevent damage that would be dealt to us. So there aren't many ways for the opponent to still kill us if we have both the nine lives and Solemnity in play, ways to make us lose life can potentially get around the damage prevention from 9 lives, so that's one way, but a lot of creature decks in the format won't be able to beat it. And then we also have a few ways to search up enchantments, with Sterling Grove, a 2-man enchantment saying other enchantments we control have Shroud, so that's the old version of Hexproof, so we also can't target our own enchantments. And for one mana we can sacrifice Sterling Grove to search our library for an enchantment card, reveal it and put it on top of our deck after shuffling. So that can help us assemble the Solemnity plus 9 lives combo, can eventually find our sigil if we need to close out the game. And then we've got a few additional one-offs to potentially search up, including Authority of the Consoles, one mana for making the opponent's creatures come into play tapped, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control we also gain one life. So this is great against any haste creatures, especially nice against the goblins deck so they can't kill you out of nowhere, very good against Krenko making a bunch of tokens, and can also save us against the Neoform combo deck for instance, so it does have a few applications. And then we also have a one-off copy of Rest in Peace as Graveyard Hate, great against any reanimator based combo decks. Then we also have four copies of Baffling End as main deck removal, exiling target creature with mana value 3 or less, and when the opponent deals with Baffling End they get a 3-3 Trampling Dino in return. And then the full place at a full fellow haven as additional ramp enchanting one of our lands, and then that land will tap for additional green mana as well, can also be sacrificed to make a 2-2 wolf token. And then we've got a one-off copy of Banishing Light and a one-off copy of Borrowed Time. These are functionally the same, just different names, there's no reason not to. And those will exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls when they enter the battlefield, and the opponent will get it back once they leave. And then there's a lot of other cards we could consider playing, like maybe a main deck copy of Destiny Spinner as a way to make our enchantments uncounterable against control decks, otherwise the opponent could simply counter Sigil of the Empty Throne and make it difficult for us to actually close out the game, as they can ignore Solemnity plus 9 lives. Then we could also consider playing a main deck Curse of Silence as a way to slow down certain combo decks that rely on a single card. Could play Ruined Halo as well as more removal, that can also shut down certain strategies that rely on a single creature, great against the Aura strategy for instance. 
Then we could also play some main deck creatures like Satessan Champion as a way to draw more cards and give us an extra win condition. Archon of Sun's Grace at 4 mana, another constellation creature that can help us go wide and make a bunch of 2-2 Pegasus tokens. So a ton of customization options available, but of course be aware that the more non-enchantments you add to the deck, the more you will dilute some of those main deck enchantment synergies. So ideally you have as many enchantments as possible, but if you find yourself struggling against a certain matchup, I'm sure there's an enchantment out there that could help. Could also play more tutor effects with idyllic tutor to help us find solemnity nine lives, but of course also not an enchantment itself and can be a little bit slow in the format. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got the full playset of Temple Garden, four copies of Sunfell Grove, we've got four of the Green White Pathway, two Overgrown Farmland, and then four of each basic forest and plains. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Although we are relying on Sithis to kind of stick around and draw some more cards. Uh, up against Elves. And we've got 9 life Solemnity. Now the question is, will we survive long enough to get both in play? Still need to find an extra white source. Turn to Freilis. So Elves typically doesn't have an answer to 9 life Solemnity. But they can certainly kill us before we get both in play. So we'll play a Sithis for now. And then worst case scenario, could play a Sterling Grove next turn to draw a card. Of course, want to get 9 lives in play before Solemnity, since that can potentially buy us an extra turn. Harmony with nature is our greatest strength. And a Dwinan's Elite. Uh, at least there's no Arch Druid to deal with, but double Dwinan's Elite means that uh, 9 lives doesn't necessarily save us for long, but there we go. So... Yeah, I think it's safe to play the nine lives here. And then the next turn Solemnity should wrap things up. Can block with Sithis if needed. Yeah, opponent's about to draw a ton of cards. But unless they've got a main deck Reclamation Sage, we should be okay. Growing rights can transform end of turn, but... Not right now. And uh, sure, I'll block a shepherd. So five counters on nine lives. Put on discards to hand size. And we'll play Solemnity and then next turn I can play Sterling Grove on the off chance that they have Reclamation Sage but doesn't seem like it and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play and uh, triple Sithis, but we also have nine life Solemnity, so got to keep and then we'll see what we're up against. Sphinx of Foresight, so this could be a Neoform combo deck, in which case getting Authority of the Consuls in play would be also quite useful, but nine life Solemnity should still be good enough, assuming we can play them in time. Opponent can certainly attack us with nine creatures if they combo off, which they could do as early as turn three. All right, did not draw land, so I guess I can play like a rest in peace just to draw a card. All right, there's our authority, so that buys us some valuable time. While we try and set up Solemnity 9 lives, no real point in attacking here. All right, Omen of the Sea. Sure, so... Opponent can combo on turn 4 if they go Seagate Stormcaller into Neoform. But with Authority, all those creatures would come into play tapped, so even if they have haste, they can't attack us. Alright, let's hope to draw land here. Sithis is legendary. Could always cast a second copy just to draw a card. Alright, there we go. Does authority resolve? Opponent actually has a spell pierce. They uh, could combo off next turn. Just cast another Sithis to get an extra life. And then hopefully that means they won't have an answer for... Solemnity 9 lives. 
but we could just be dead here. Peril's Voyage, Bouncing Sithis. So a lot of interaction hopefully means they're less likely to have the combo rolled up. Opponent passes. So normally I would want to play 9 lives before Solemnity, given that our opponent probably kills us through 9 lives anyway, and they show the spell pierce, I think I lead on Solemnity. And then next turn if I draw land I can maybe play 9 lives and be able to pay for spell pierce as well. Alright, so let's see if they've got the combo. They scry to the bottom so far. Right, Wall of Blossoms, so we're not in danger of dying right now. Steam Vents untapped. Baffling End. So I could go Sithis into Baffling End if I want to play around Spell Pierce. Baffling End first could also help play around Neoform into the um, dual caster mage, which is another way they have to combo, which would require them to have a two mana creature in play to sacrifice, so exiling with baffling and would still buy time. So the main concern of course with nine lives is they spell pierce it and then we're in a bit of trouble. Given that they don't have the combo yet, but they might have the dual caster mage part of the combo, I think I just baffling end the wall and um, that way I can also pay for Spell Pierce on Baffling End. Even though I miss out on a Sithis trigger. They could have another Perilous Voyage, which could also mess with our enchantments. Alright, so a bit of an awkward sequence here, but we'll see if it uh, works out. Opponent goes for a Valakut Awakening instead. Alright. So maybe regretting not going for the 9 lives now. 6 cards in hand for the opponents. Opponent passes, and now I can pay for Spell Pierce. And then Sigil will eventually help us close out the game. Would be nice to find Sterling Grove to protect my enchantments from getting bounced. Opponent goes for another Valakut Awakening, keeps digging for those combo pieces. Alright, I could play another Sithis just to draw a card here. Doesn't seem super necessary. I'll pass. Again, I could be chipping in for one as well. Alright, opponent did have the Perilous Voyage for Solemnity. So they could still kill us if they have. At least 10 attackers. Another reason to keep Sithis back is it's an extra blocker. Alright, nothing from the opponent. Well, I guess we'll replay Solemnity, hope to draw land. And then I can play double Solemnity. And now they would need plenty of bound spells to still kill us. So yeah, opponent did a lot of wheel spinning. It's going to be Perilous Voyage number 3 on Solemnity. And a dual caster mage to copy it, so they can bounce both copies of Solemnity. Okay, so... Got a discard to hand size. Sithis can probably go, or I could get rid of... Like a Banishing Light, I guess. In case we need to jump with Sithis here. But nope, opponent does not have the combo. Next turn they know we can replay Solemnity and they're out of answers having played all those perilous voyages already. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and... Hand seems reasonable except for, I guess, my two lands both coming into play tapped. It's pretty awkward. Nowhere close to assembling the Nine Lives combo. But I do have a lot of removal, plus hopefully card draw. Yeah, I think it's mostly the mana base here that's going to make me mulligan. Alright, this is better. 
And then what to put on the bottom. Probably baffling ends, since I can curve Weaver into maybe a borrowed time, start playing Sigil and making Angels. And Baffling Ends not useful in every matchup. Right, Sterling Grove is nice too. I think I still play Weaver even though Sterling Grove first could protect the Weaver from removal. Burning Tree Emissary, so it could be Gruul Aggro or maybe Shamans. Pelt Collector points towards Gruul Aggro. Alright, Enchantress's Presence is nice. So I can play Enchantress's Presence. Although the Weaver only makes Man of One Color, so I wouldn't be able to go Presence into Sterling Grove. Could go Sterling Grove into Presence, but then of course I don't draw a card. I think that's still fine. And then next turn can already play Sigil. Keep my borrowed time to maybe answer a larger creature. Like Spellbreaker. Now, Questing Beast, which the opponent could have, is a card that potentially gets around the 9 lives combo, as the Questing Beast makes it so damage prevention doesn't happen. So that's important to keep in mind. And Drew Sithis. So if I play Sithis, I could play Sigil. If I play Sigil first, I can't necessarily play Sithis unless I draw a land. So I guess it's Sithis into Sigil. Or I could play it safe and go for Borrow Time on Spellbreaker. But this is more mana efficient. Am I in danger of dying next turn to an Ember Cleave? That would be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Not quite. Alright, and then now we're in great shape to take over with our Angel Tokens. Bonin moves to combat. So, are we dead to Embercleaf plus Stomp? That we might be. So Embercleaf costs 3 mana, I guess they would still be 1 mana short of casting the Stomp. So yeah, Embercleaf on Spellbreaker. Has me taking 12, so I think we're fine to just pass. And Stomp is another way for the opponent to also get around 9 life Solemnity, so a lot of potential problems there. Could sacrifice Sterling Grove to find 9 lives already. I think I wait to keep the extra mana for Weaver. And then now I could go Presence into Borrowed Time. And make a bunch of Angels to block with. So let's see. Can make 6 mana here. I can play Presence into Borrowed Time still. And at this point I'm not super concerned about Questing Beast or Stomp or what have you. Maybe 9 lives over Borrowed Time at this point. And Baffling End can deal with the Spellbreaker. Alright, seeing the power of Sanctum Weaver here, generating a ton of mana. And our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand makes a lot of mana, but it doesn't really get us anywhere. This is better. And then... Tempted to bottom the Baffling End, even though it's my only interaction. Sithis is our Cardra engine. Haven makes mana, which seems important. And then Sterling Grove can help us find 9 lives to go with Solemnity. So I think it's between Sithis and Baffling End to put on the bottom. And I think I'm gonna be greedy and bottom the Baffling End. If we're up against a creature deck where Baffling End is good, 
The 9 life solemnity combo should also be good, so then I'm not too concerned about the uh, fact that we're missing out on a bit of interaction. Opponent on Jeskai. Control is not my favorite matchup because they can just keep their counter spells for our few win conditions like Sigil. And then we won't have an easy time actually winning the game, even if we have Solemnity 9 lives. But we'll see. Could be a creativity combo deck, in which case that's less of a concern. Alright, Valiant Rescuer instead. A cycling deck, alright. That's uh, surprising. Now Solemnity stops the counters on Flourishing Fox. Although it's tempting to play Sanctum Weaver first to develop my mana, could go Haven into Weaver. And then typically want to put Haven on the basic land just in case of Field of Ruin, but don't think that's going to be relevant in this matchup. Alright, so again, Cycling, Nine Life Solemnity should be good enough. Zenith Flare just uh, doesn't do much with the Nine Lives in play. And our opponent was off to a relatively slow start. Right, go for blood, kill Sithis. Although Sanctum Weaver is slightly more valuable for us here. So, probably start by playing Sithis. And then... Can play Haven, or I could first play Weaver, and then play Haven. I guess we'll uh, do it like this. Okay, comes into play untapped, and then maybe go Weaver plus Solemnity to stop the Flourishing Fox. And next turn we should be able to make quite a few angels. Can also eventually find rest in peace to exile the opponent's graveyard, which would shut down Zenith Flare, but again, nine life solemnity should be good enough. Take five. Enchantress's presence is nice. I guess I prioritize drawing cards over making angels. And then something I could do here, if I draw a couple more enchantments, is play Sterling Grove and then I can search up the missing combo piece here, which would be nine lives. And then uh, draw into it in the very same turn by casting another enchantment. But yeah, opponent sees a writing on the wall, Sterling Grove can search up nine lives and they don't have an answer to it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a decent hand. Just missing land number three, got our two combo pieces, bit of interaction and a card draw engine. So it doesn't get much better. Just gotta hope it's a matchup where the combo is good enough, which is not always the case. Red whites. Make that just guy. Alrighty, so do I go straight for one of my three mana enchantments? Probably. Let's play Solemnity first. And that resolves. And I'll play it safe and just keep Sithis back. Alright, Faithful Mending, so maybe more of a Reanimator deck. 
than your typical control deck. And yeah, we already see Dragon Storm plus Bladewing, so in next turn they could combo off. Don't expect any real interaction for Solemnity 9 lives, and I don't think their combo can beat our combo necessarily. Then we even have Sterling Grove to protect our enchantments afterwards. Alright, so unless they've got a Spell Pierce here, we should be fine. Alright, I guess I'll hit for one now. And our opponent concedes, Solemnity 9 lives, claims another victim. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. My hand is kind of unexciting. I've got two removal spells, a grove with nothing specific to search up, and a haven for mana. I think we mulligan. This is not much better. I have two groves coming into play tapped, which is awkward. But I guess double weaver at least makes a bit more mana. And then I'm just a nine lives away from the combo. Turn one Soul Warden. So maybe an Angel life gain deck. Innkeeper. Alright, never mind. So it's the Heliot plus uh, Scurry Oak combo deck, perhaps. And uh, yeah, I'll play a Sanctum Weaver. And then Solemnity stops at least the Scurry Oak part of the combo. But they might still have the uh, Famish Paladin plus Presence of Gaunt combo as well. Right, it's going to be Collected Company. They could just win the game if they hit Scurry Oak plus Heliod. It's going to be Trellisara plus Heliod instead. Alright, so Solemnity can shut down a bunch of their counter synergies as we try and find 9 lives. And they typically don't have answers to enchantments in the deck. Alrighty, so step one, I guess, play Solemnity, and then I can play a Sanctum Weaver number two. And then we're hoping to find one of our card draw engines to then uh, find a 9 lives, or just draw 9 lives, or Sterling Grove. There's a Scurry Oak, so if it weren't for Solemnity, we would have succumbed to infinite squirrels and even infinite damage, since the opponent has two life gainers in play. Now we're still at 15, we're still taking quite a bit of damage here, so we've got limited time. Another Weaver doesn't do me much good. So what's my play here? I could also try and make a wolf token. All right, opponent finds a Lunark Veteran and smashes. So I'll be taking four.
All right, Baffling Ants can deal with a Moon Dancer at least. And I'll make a wolf as an extra blocker. So one more turn to find nine lives. And Enchantress's presence could have been a reason to hang on to a couple enchantments to draw cards afterwards, but yeah, it's gonna be game over here. So the Solemnity was effective at stopping the opponent, just uh, didn't find one of our card engines to actually cycle through the deck. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play and facing Gigantha the Wellspring. Does that tell me much? Not necessarily. My hand has Solemnity Sterling Growth, so I can eventually get the combo Haven for a bit more mana. I'll try it. And then I'll play a tapped Grove. Probably need this on white since Haven makes extra green. Could technically play with the uh, companion ourselves. Alright, Sithis probably wants to be played right now. Alright, Fatal Push deals with that. So opponent might be on a 5-color niv deck, is my guess. So they'll have answers to enchantments most likely. So maybe a Sterling Grove first to protect Solemnity 9 lives could be relevant. And there we see the Kavu, already a 5-5. Five five. So... Could exile it, could play Enchantress's Presence first. Probably should avoid taking five. Although it's nice to get my card ranging going first. Although if they remove this, then we're kind of back to square one. Yeah, let's play the Presence. Need to draw lands. Opponent puts Gigantha in hand. Alright, now probably fine to borrow its time. And then we've got a backup Solemnity in case they answer it. Nine lives has hexproof, so it can be answered as easily. So, step one, play Solemnity. Sanctum Weaver could also be nice. We'll have Shroud thanks to Grove. Opponent Cycles. 
and plays a Graf Digger's Cage. Don't think that bothers me. So I could sacrifice Sterling Grove right now to find 9 lives. But then I wouldn't necessarily have the mana to play a backup Sterling Grove for protection. At 10 I should be safe for another turn. So I think I can just take my draw step. Alright. And then probably play a Sithis and Weaver. Could play Sigil as well. If we get to untap with Weaver, we can make all the mana in the world. And then maybe play a backup Sterling Grove. Alright, there's a 9 lives, so can play that next turn. Alright, so not in a bad spot. Gigantha attacks. I think it's safe to take 5. Opponent keeps cycling. They haven't had a very exciting draw, no Niv miss it yet. So, step one sigil. And then we'll play the nine lives. Lightning Helix or Face, sure. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems okay. A little bit on the slow side with no two drops, but an interaction, card draw, and one part of the combo. You'll have noticed I've added Umori, the Collectress Companion, to now, just to try it out. The game against the Heliot Scurry Oak deck. We might have been able to survive a bit longer with Umori since we had a lot of mana and a random 4-5 could have kept us alive. Alright, there we go. So hopefully a matchup where Solemnity 9 lives is good enough. Opponent on Jund's Sacrifice deck. Now Cauldron Familiar, Priest of Forgotten Gods. Those are ways to still make us lose life despite the uh, combo here. But play an Enchantress's Presence since we're not in a hurry to get 9 lives in play. And draw a few extra cards. Banishing Light can answer the Oven. Mayhem Devil also good at dealing a lot of damage through 9 lives. So probably start with a Solemnity. And next turn, 9 lives will at least deal with Mayhem Devil. Alright, Binding doesn't actually work with the Solemnity in play. That's a funny interaction. Sagas work with counters and Solemnity stops counters from being put on enchantments. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Multiple card draw engines, a little bit of extra mana with Haven. Part one of the combo. Facing humans. Okay, so they do have Skyclave Apparition to deal with some of my enchantments potentially. Although not played in every deck. For now, I think playing Sithis is fine. Something like Thalia would be annoying, instead of opponent's just gonna crack their clue. And then could play Enchantress's Presence, or could play Double Haven to develop my mana. 
think Double Haven for now might be slightly better. Try and get the Sigil in play as soon as possible, and Weaver is even better here. Alright, awesome. Opponent cranks the clue, so they're off to a relatively slow start. But we can expect them to play some good 3-drops. Uh, Elite Spellbinder can slow down Sigil. But we still have a Weaver in play, which generates a ton of mana. Baffling End's great too. So, let's just draw some cards. Maybe play Baffling End. Another Presence. Tap for green. And yeah, I don't think our opponent's beating this start. We've got the combo in hand. To discard to hand size even. And then Sterling Grove can protect Solemnity from a potential Skyclave apparition. Asper Sentinel would have been quite effective for them. But it's probably too late now. Alrighty, so Solemnity, do I want to play Sigil first by any chance? Sure. Opponent gets to draw their card. This makes 8 mana. That should do it. Gotta discard to hand size a bunch. I guess I'll keep a backup solemnity. There we go. They're looking at Solemnity, do they have an answer? Next turn, Sterling Grove will protect it. But they're also just kind of dying to my angels in the meantime. Solemnity stops the counters from Lieutenant. Giant Killer kills one angel. Opponents fighting until the bitter end. I can respect that. Alright, I guess we'll uh, play a second sigil then. Just gonna make sure I don't deck myself by drawing too many cards. I think we'll be fine. How about we play Umori? So I can say that it was actually useful. I think we can call it quits here. Maybe maybe a couple more angels. While we're here. Alright, sure that's enough.
Alright, fine, I'll play authority. I guess the one scenario that could get us is vanquish the horde, wiping the board, and then I don't have enough cards in library to make more angels to win the game. But doesn't look like it here. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and we've got a keeper. Turn one hard evidence, so it is a combo deck. Trying to cheat potentially the Seros Emissary into play. Although that's a lot of blue mana, more than I'm used to. So Weaver or Sithis first. I think Sithis. Since I want to find nine lives. All right, Assault Formation, I see. So it's a different deck than the one I imagined. A blue-green Assault Formation deck. All right, so I can Haven into Baffling Ends. The good news is that our uh, Solemnity nine lives will be quite effective. Alright, there's the nine lives, so... That should seal the deal. I guess if they do have Fae of Wishes to potentially grab sideboard cards to answer or a combo. Tetsuko makes the crab unblockable. No jumping allowed. Opponent can crack the clue end of turn. I should maybe shock myself to play around Spell Pierce, because even if they have the um, tower defense to pump their team, the nine lives will make it so I don't die, so as long as nine lives resolves, I'm fine. Don't think they would be playing Spell Pierce necessarily, but might as well play it safe. And then I'll play a Weaver as well. And then next turn, Solemnity plus Sterling Grove should uh, do it. Two counters on nine lives. And Fae of Wishes just cast, so opponent's not searching up anything out of the side. Okay, what's my sequencing here? Can I afford to play a Sigil first? Looks like it. Then I'll tap this for white, so I can also play Sterling Grove just in case. Or I could just play Double Solemnity. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. Well, we faced a wide variety of decks. Ranked up quite a bit, playing Green-White Enchantress. And yeah, Solemnity Nine Lives is just a very effective combo, especially in Bus of One, when people may not be prepared to answer it. That's why in my Black-Red Goblins deck, for instance, that I've been playing, I've included one main deck copy of Sling Gang Lieutenant as a way to potentially still make the opponent lose life, and that has definitely won me a few games, even against the Solemnity Nine Lives combo. Just gotta make sure you've got enough of a board presence to then kill the opponent in one hit, but I'll maybe bring you that Black Red Goblins deck in a future video. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.